I've gone to see the first couple episodes now. It is so much damn fun. I like again. I know I shouldn't be saying damn on Disney interviews, but ah, oh, it's ah. a fun show. <laughs> uh, so, kind of starting off, I wanted to congratulate the both of you specifically because there's such a fun. Immediately, these two are so immediate, like so fun, like uh, Luella and Di- uh, Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> so, I kind of wanted to ask you both: What was it like when you saw this pitch for this? I mean, you, was this something that crossed your desk and you went? Okay, or was this something that you auditioned for? What was this process like to join the series? Yeah, for me, it was just a traditional audition. I auditioned about three to four times, and then I got the role. Yeah, and for me, it was, uh, uh, again, auditioning. They were saying, this is something you they really wanted to hear me do, because I do a lot of animals and a lot of creatures. And uh, I I play Hulk, who's had a past with Devil Dinosaur, but they just wanted to you know see what I could do with this and experiment with the with the voice, you know, and try to do what I've done with scary monsters and make it softer and and kinder. <laughs> well, that was actually something I wanted to, to ask you about, right? Was that you get to, Devil conveys so much emotion. He talks so much. And I love that we don't <laughs> see the translation of that. So what is it like as a, as a voice performer who has a lot of experience with animals, but like, Devil speaks more like he's clearly talking to. Yes, them. yeah, it's I, I, it's a oh gosh, it's such a fun challenge as a voice artist because what it is, I, I always say it's like a broken saxophone. I show up, I've got the notes, you know, I, I want to hear what the real line is, and then I want to play the notes of what what it is. So we start off with the usual elements of a T Rex, <laughs> which is scary, but now we're talking about. Uh, Lunella, I'm really worried about you and Casey on this mission, <clears throat> and I might, I might actually say it out. <clears throat> now I'm not going to say that, right? So we're going to reduce it down to four, maybe three grunts, you know. <clears throat> you know, and and I'm I'm worried, or I'm stronger, you know, and, and these are, and we'll do about three or four different passes. Sam Regal, the uh, direct, uh, ADR director, I'm sorry, the voice director, and then the other directors and writers will listen in, and we kind of piece it out. We do three or four takes and try to figure it out, you know, along the way. It's 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 a, it's a very interesting process. Huh. No, I love that. I, I love getting the video for that. That was really nice. <laughs> but, no, that's fascinating. Huh. Oh, that's so Thanks. cool. Uh, and then Diamond, I wanted to really tip, like, we were watching this. My wife and I were watching the show, and one of our nieces who this past holiday only asked for science. That was it. That was all she wanted. Uh, so I'm... That means the show is working. It's working. That's what we want. Uh, science is cool. Not, she's going to love this show. She's going to freak out about this show. And this is going to be like, I'm so, so curious. Like, for you, from your perspective, this is going to be so many little kids' favorite character. This is going to be so many girls' superhero. What does that mean to you to get to kind of bring this to life, to, to kind of I mean, to really play this? It means everything. The representation of it all. This was a character that I needed growing up. So I'm just happy that it's finally here, to be honest. It is just, it's what it, this, and I love the fact that the show tackles so much about representation, about community. It touches on a lot of, I, I was just speaking with uh, Gary and Libby about it, of like the show touches on a lot of 2023 elements but has to do so because it's a superhero show. It's a Marvel story. It does it in a timeless manner. So what was it kind of like kind of finding that bridge, the gap in the, uh, finding the bridge between those two elements of this, this well, superhero archetype and then the 2023 of it all? I mean, I put together a list of all the things that I've experienced growing up, and I sent it to the team of the show, and they actually took it into consideration. So a bunch of these episodes that you'll see are um kind of my experiences growing up as you know black girl like the hair episode is something that i was like hey like what if we do like a perm episode where lunella gets her first perm and uh it's yeah so you see a lot of different real life stories and i think that's what makes the show different because it's not just a superhero fighting villains it's a teenage girl uh, going through everyday teenage things, you know? I did love in the first episode where it's the, oh my God, you're really a girl. Yeah, it's it, it's literally in the <laughs> name. Uh, I, I think that is also about all the time I've got. Diamond and Fred, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank this you is, so much, it is such a, Brandon. Of course, I, it is such a fun show. I am so excited for everybody to see it. Congrats again. 
I hope it runs for 19 years. This is such a, I'm so Please. into this series. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Have a good rest of your day. A good rest of time. Many more, many more of these you got to do. And I'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>